Hello, everyone, and welcome to this, another episode of 3D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode, we took care of the winning condition, so our player can now win. Uh, we also took care of being able to change the pivot point of an existing 3D object, uh, which is something that Unity can't currently do in any easy format. Uh, so hopefully what I showed you was helpful. Uh, I think today is going to be the last episode in this series. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that really needs to be said or done. I will look through to make sure I've got everything in here because there was a lot of episodes. This is episode number 43. Uh, so there's a lot of episodes here, a lot of information I covered, and I want to make sure I gave you all of the right stuff. So there might be one last, like, one last, like, hey, look at this episode. <laughs> I don't know. There's also going to be the results episodes, guys. Uh, the results of my my th my third year students. Hopefully, I've got some really good games coming out. Uh, hopefully, they'll all have them done, and I'll be able to show off some of the games that those students made. Okay, I'm really got my fingers crossed, and hopefully, you guys will be able to see those games too. Uh, so that's it. That'll be the end of the series. Just today's, and uh, maybe one or two like a results, and uh, maybe one correction video or something like that. There's something I want to work on, and that's the the jumping that you guys have mentioned a few times. Anyway, we'll talk about that later on. In today's episode, what we're going to take a look at is uh, the ability to be able to escape out of the game. Um, currently, if you win, you start the level over, and if you lose, you start the level over. So all you keep doing is starting the level over forever and ever and ever, and you don't want that. Uh, we're going to set it up so that you can either click a button to get out of the game and, and, and just get out of the game, or hit the escape button and get out of the game. Uh, we're also going to take a look at compiling your finished game. Uh, and what's required to do that, and what you're going to end up with. All right, guys, let's get started. Okay, guys, so first things first, basically what I want to do is add a button right up here in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, and we have a few different options on how to do this. Uh, depending on how much information you want to add, how many buttons you want to add that are interactable, uh, we can go through and build ourselves a, a separate canvas, which is what I'm going to ultimately do in case you guys have more buttons you want to add. Um, if you don't want to and you're like, well, I, I like the canvas I have, you're going to have to make sure that the canvas group is turned on to interactable uh, to allow uh, you to interact with a button. If you don't turn that back on, you won't be able to interact with anything that's on this canvas at all. We do currently have our sliders set up so that they are not interactable. Um, so you could turn this on without any real danger of anyone being able to slide uh, slide this back and forth. All right, so that's that's one of the one of the options. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to create a brand new canvas to show you can have overlapping canvases first of all, uh, and also to demonstrate to you that uh, just to go over the uh, the original design behind GUI again. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create not inside here, out in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to create a brand new UI canvas, boop. And uh, we're going to call this canvas, uh, let's go to the top here. Uh, we're going to call this canvas uh, extra button canvas. Extra button canvas. Uh, and so any of your extra buttons that you might want to have in here, if you have for some reason, you know, more than just the single button I'm going to show you, you can add it in here. And what we did last time, we made sure that we went to the top, and right now it's currently set to screen overlay, so it's spread across the entire screen, which is great. We're going to scroll down here, and we're going to add a component, and we're going to add in a canvas group. Canvas group. And right here, the last time we said not interactable. All right, and we're going to leave this one here to interactable. Uh, we'll turn off blocks raycast. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but we'll do this for now. All right, and what I want to do on this extra canvas, on this extra button canvas, I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to say create, and I'm going to create a brand new UI element. I'm going to create a button. Bam. There's my button. Let's, uh, let's center. Oh, I thought I turned off Skype. Great. Uh, let's center this out for now uh, and make sure that it's where we want it to be. Now, we don't want it in the center of the screen. We don't want it in the center of the screen at all. We want it to be upper in the upper right-hand corner. So right away, we can go into our little little box right here we can click on it and we can say alt or shift and alt and we can move it into the upper right hand corner just like that now ultimately we're gonna add a little bit of an offset to make sure it's it's kinda where we like it but it's fine for now what I want to do next let's take a look at what a button is a button consists of this image script along with text so there's a text and everything else associated with it um, as well as this uh, this button script and the button script is what allows us to go through and and do any kind of, uh, of uh, interaction with the button itself all right so first thing I want to do is change my UI script uh, sorry the UI image source image I don't want to use uh, I don't want to use uh, I don't want to use anything that's actually in here right now let's go into our textures 
find our textures, find our close button right here, and let's make sure that this is a 2D icon, or a icon, excuse me, uh, right here, 2D sprite. Bam! And as soon as we say apply, it's now going to be available as a button. So let's change the name of this to quit button, first of all. Quit button. And let's go in here and change out our our image to be a, our icon. Now, obviously, I want it to be square, so let's make it a 30 by 30. Uh, let's make it 50 by 50 just to make sure. 50 by 50. 50 by 50. All right, great. Uh, and let's go down here and take a look. Um, once that's set, we've actually got our actual icon set up, uh, and everything is perfect. All right. The only thing we're missing currently is our our list of info, like our list of of um, publicly available uh, options to be able to click on this button. All right. Let's let's move it away from the edge a little bit too. I don't like where it is. It's not located in the right spot. Uh, let's move it in the X. Let's move it minus 25. And let's move it uh, minus 25 in the Y. So when I hit play now, it's located right there, which is perfect. All right. OK, so basically what I want to do is add a little bit of code now that's going to allow me to access this button and do specific things. So adding code is not difficult at all. Um, basically, I want to add code to an existing object. And we've already got our game controller right here. Uh, so I'm going to add the existing, I'm going to add code to our restart game. Uh, and allow, oh, let's make this view, let's make this bigger. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and one more for good measure, zoom in. All right, uh, so we want to add code into uh, this existing object right here. Uh, we're going to add only a couple of lines of code. I want to have two situations where I can actually close off this application. One, if you click the button, and secondly, if you hit escape. If you don't want to go and click, you can just hit escape and get out of the game. All right. So first, if we want to close this game by using the, the button, uh, we're going to add a public void function uh, that I'm going to call quit game. Oops, quit game. It's not going to take any parameters, and there are my braces. Uh, basically, it's one line of code: application dot quit. All right. Brackets and semicolon. So. When I say file save here, file save, uh, and I go back to my actual button. Uh, actually, you know what? In the button itself, make sure you've opened up the little arrow. If you want to keep the text and put something in there, you can. I don't want it. I'm just going to hit delete. I don't want it at all. Just the quit button by itself is fine. If we scroll down in the quit button, uh, we've got this list, uh, empty list uh, of on click events. And basically, what I want to do, I'm going to add to it plus. Uh, I'm going to add to it one object. I'm going to add to it our game controller. And when I drop my game controller in here, uh, it's going to allow me to pick out any of the public functions that I've got available uh, uh, to to use. So restart game is where I want to use it. It's my function. And I want to find quit game. Boom. That's it. Once I file save this, file save, this will now allow me to quit. Uh, and I'll have to show you once this is compiled. Uh, you can, I don't think you can use the quit button. Let me just double check. I don't think you can. Let's just check. No, you can't. Um, you can't use the quit button. You can't use this quit application in in uh, in this mode. It has to actually be a, a compiled project. But we're going to compile it today, guys. Don't worry. All right, so that's the first way of quitting. The second way I want to quit, let's open up our function again. The second way I want to quit is by hitting the escape button. So in the update, if uh, if input 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 dot and we're going to basically be looking at a key get key and if someone hits the escape key so quotations escape quotations if someone hits the escape key then what do I want to do I want to application I could actually just go in and 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 and, and say quit game <laughs> but I'm not going I'm going to say application just so you guys see it again quit Bang. All right, and that's it. When I say file, save, our our game now allows us to quit either through the escape key or through that button. All right. So like I said, I can't demonstrate it right now. I just can't do it. We don't have the ability while we're in this mode. But I'm going to show you right now how to actually compile your game. OK, guys, this is it. This is it. We're ending. <laughs> don't feel too bad. There's going to be another series. Don't worry, but we're ending this one very soon.
Okay, guys, so, sorry, I realized there was a couple of quick mistakes, and I realized after the fact, so let's take a look at them really fast right now. Uh, in our code, boom, I actually had an error right here. I was missing a bracket, so it should be if input dot get key bracket quotations escape quotations bracket and a close bracket. All right, guys, that was our first error. The second error, and I think this is an error. I'm not really sure, but I'd rather check it out now. Um, in our extra buttons canvas, make sure that blocks raycast is actually on. I think that has to be on to make it interactable. I'm not sure, but I don't think it's going to work otherwise. So I'm just going to turn it on for now and make sure. Um, all right, so let's check out what's going to happen here. With those two things done, uh, if I want to compile, compiling is very, very simplistic, file, and you're going to go to build settings and click it. When you do, a brand new window is going to open up. Okay, On yours, it's not going to say main unity here. It's going to say scenes and build, and it's going to be empty. Click Add Current, and basically what you're doing is you're adding in all the scenes that you want to be compiled into your game. All right, If you haven't added a scene, it's not going to be in the game, and, in, and if there's an error in there where you're trying to go to that scene, it's not going to work. All right, So you're going to go through and you're going to add any scenes that you want to be compiled. You want to make sure you limit it to those that you have to have, and you want to make sure you limit the assets in your game to those you actually need. We haven't talked really at all, and we're not going to talk at all about optimization, uh, but you really want to make sure this compiles as small as you can. Okay, so in my case, I am compiling for uh, PC, Mac, and Linux. If I compile on PC, which I'm doing here, it'll run on PC. If you compile on Mac, obviously it'll run on Mac, etc. Okay, down below that is your player settings. If you click that button, bang, it's going to open up a brand new window over here in the inspector. And this window is going to allow you to choose a number of different things. Uh, for example, at the top, uh, you can choose a product name, uh, your company, etc. Uh, in resolution, you can go through and decide what type of resolution, whether it's full screen, uh, whether or not you have certain supported or unsupported uh, aspect ratios. Uh, and you might want to do that if you're building this for, let's say, a particular iPhone or particularly for a particular Samsung or something like that. You might want to actually restrict the aspect ratios you can work in. Uh, so all that is in here. Down below that, is the icon and when you have when you look at yours it's going to say none it's going to look like this it's going to say none and basically the icon that this is referring to is the is the little icon uh, that represents your game when it's you know on the desktop or whatever your actual game icon by choosing something anything at all so i'm going to go through and choose this time i'll choose something different i'll choose the flamethrower. Um, by choosing something like this, then when I when I actually compile this game, uh, it's not going to show the little Unity symbol. Instead, it's going to show my particular icon, which obviously you want to do. Uh, down a little further, uh, and it, this auto fills. All right, so if you choose one, it auto fills the rest. The splash image. Now, if you own the professional version of Unity, I don't. I'm using the the public version. Uh, if you own the professional version, then you can go through and make your own splash screen. Uh, if you don't, it's going to be it's going to be grayed out and checked. So it's automatically going to show the Unity the Unity splash screen. Uh, you can go through, however, and check a dialog banner box. Uh, and if you don't, it's going to say none like this. Uh, and if you choose something, so I'll say select, and I will choose. I'll go back and I'll choose this again. Uh, and when I do, it's going to show up in the in the actual selection window. And I'll show you what that is in one second. With everything picked the way I like, yep, I like that, I now can say build and run. And it's going to ask me to give it a name. I'm going to rename it YouTube, a zombie YouTube. I want to overwrite the existing one. I had already done it once. And it's going to compile the entire, the entire thing. Takes a second or two. Now this new window is going to pop up, and it's going to say what it was called. Uh, it's going to tell you what your graphic options are. You can choose different sizes, whatever you suggest you could support, whether or not you want it windowed or not, what kind of graphics you're going to have, etc., etc. All right, uh, where it's going to be displayed uh, on this input here, it's going to allow you to go through and and configure the input that you've got set up. All right, so you can go through and configure your joysticks, etc., etc., all right here, which is awesome. Uh, and once you've got it the way you like it, I'm just going to leave it at default, and I'm going to say play. When I do, the Unity splash screen is going to show up. If you have a professional version, that won't happen. And there is our game. I can do everything I could do before. If I go up to this little button up here in the corner and I click it, the game itself then ends. Okay, so everything is working the way it's supposed to. Let's hit build and run one more time so you can see the escape button also works. Compiling, compiling, compiling. 
Oh, and this is this is the oh, when it said splash uh, banner image. This is the splash banner image right here. All right, I'll just say play. And when I start up the game, there it is. I can run. I can jump. I can do everything I need to do. And if I hit escape, the game ends. All right, guys, that's it. That's how easy it is. Let's take a quick look at this. Uh, when you actually build the game, you're going to end up with a couple of things. You're going to end up with this uh, application, as well as a data file, so a zombie YouTube data uh, and zombie YouTube application. Both of those are required in order to play the game. So if you want to send this to somebody, you have to send both the, the data as well as the application itself. And that's it, guys. You've got yourself a working game. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you enjoyed this series. I don't think anything else has to be done. Of course, we are going to see the, the students' uh, work that they've done. I'm going to have that up in a little while. Uh, and I'm also going to have up, I think uh, I have a correction episode that I want to make uh, where I noticed I forgot something. <laughs> so there is going to be at least one more actual episode where I forgot to add something. As well, lots of people have been asking me about uh, an issue that they said they've been experiencing where the player can jump higher sometimes. And until recently, I thought, you know what's crazy? That doesn't happen. Uh, and I realized that it does. It does happen, and I can correct it for you. So I'm going to put up an episode where we correct it, as well as an episode where I correct some of the issues that I messed up in this very long 43-episode uh, series. All right, guys? I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you made yourself an awesome game. If you did, send it to me. I really, really want to see it. Okay, guys? Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.